Hi, my name is Anthony Mando and I'm with the Robotics and Mechatronics Group at Universidad de Málaga, UMA, in Spain. In this presentation, I'll introduce our recent research on automatic object detection from thermal infrared and visible light cameras in search and rescue scenes. I'll start the presentation introducing the multimodal data set that we have used in this work. Then I'll present how we have adopted the YOLO architecture to recognize four representative object classes in both thermal and visible light networks. Then I'll analyze and compare results obtained with both networks. And finally, some conclusions and outlook for future research. The data collection has been possible with the cooperation of the Chair for Security, Emergencies and Disasters at Universidad de Málaga. Every year, the Chair organizes a large-scale disaster response exercise attended by hundreds of participants from Spanish government and non-government organizations. In the 2018 and 2019 editions, we were allowed to capture multimodal data from these realistic outdoor exercises that could be used for research in disaster robotics. With this purpose, we drove through the scenarios with an all-terrain vehicle where we had installed a sensor suite that included GPS, inertial sensors, a Velodyne 3D LiDAR and RGB and thermal infrared cameras. Our goal was to obtain data that included as many involved persons, representative objects and terrain features of a disaster response site as possible without interfering too much with the development of the exercises. As a result, we captured 77 minutes of data recorded during a total path length of over 5 kilometers. Our intention is to make this data set publicly available in the near future. In particular, the pairs of RGB and thermal images were captured with an Oculus Ti device by Silent Sentinel. This compact system has monocular visible light and thermal infrared cameras with mostly overlapping fields of view. The infrared images are in the long wave infrared spectrum and were captured with white hot polarity. The Oculus device has a PTZ mechanism, but we maintained the forward looking direction with the widest field of view which is a bit wider for the RGB camera, as you can see in the examples shown here. Both images were obtained with the same resolution, at 25 frames per second. So we have an RGB frame for every thermal frame. Our major goal has been to use a selection of the dataset to train two convolutional neural networks with the YOLO architecture one for the thermal images and other for visible light images. Thus, we can compare and analyze the results of both networks for recognizing representative search and rescue objects. This analysis can be useful for developing fusion strategies with both image modalities. With this purpose, we have defined four target classes. These can be considered as particular disaster site types of more general or standard object recognition classes for persons and vehicles. First, we wanted the networks to distinguish between first responders and civilians. First responders can be identified as the persons wearing different kinds of uniforms or high visibility jackets. In the video frames, Civilians can be observers, journalists, or actors acting as survivors. Second, two classes are defined for vehicles. Response vehicles, which include ambulances, trucks, vans, and rescue robots, and civilian cars, which do not have distinguishable signs from emergency response organizations. As the original search and rescue dataset contains more than a hundred thousand image pairs, 
we needed to select representative frames that contained a sufficient number of instances of the classes of interest. In total, we have manually selected and labeled 2,288 frames, including both RGB and thermal frames. Each frame has been labeled with a label box tool. About 70% of the frames have been used for training, with an additional 15% of validation frames to avoid overfitting in the training procedure. The remaining 15% have been used as ground truth for testing in the analysis of the results. Besides, we have used data augmentation functions that apply random horizontal flips, crops, and translations to the dataset. For the networks, we have used YOLO version 3 with transfer learning from weights that had been pre-trained with a COCO dataset, which consists of RGB images. The labeled training frames from our dataset were used for fine-tuning the weights of the fully connected layers of each network. The training parameters, shown in the table, are taken from the literature, we have adjusted empirically the number of epochs. Besides, we have adopted early stopping criteria to avoid overfitting. So now I'll discuss the results obtained with both networks for automatic recognition of the classes using the set of test frames. Let's start with some qualitative analysis of representative image pairs, where the ground truth is illustrated on the left with bounding boxes over the RGB image. The major limitation observed in the thermal network refers to the distinction between both person classes, as the infrared channel cannot provide much information about the uniforms. Thus, the civilian in the blue box in example number one is misclassified as a first responder by the thermal network, while it is a true positive in the RGB classifier. Example number two also shows a person misclassification. Nevertheless, this example also illustrates the strength of the thermal network for recognizing distant persons with respect to the RGB network. In the RGB image, only the two closest persons have been recognized. Something similar happens in example number three, where both networks detect a distant rescue vehicle, but only the thermal one succeeds in recognizing the first responder standing by it. In any case, example number four illustrates the general good performance of both networks. In this case, both successfully detect the distant first responder on the left, the crushed civilian car in the rubble, and even the civilian inside the car. The examples in this slide illustrate the strength of the thermal network over RGB for detecting persons in dark environments. Example number five shows rescue personnel inside a tent which are difficult to perceive by the RGB image. Example number six has been taken inside our lab in the dark as a test frame for, for this work. The thermal network recognizes two persons but fails to detect the vehicle, which was parked and offer no, no distinctive thermal information. Watching the performance of the networks over a video stream can also provide some qualitative insight. In this video example, it is interesting to see that when there is a group of people, the RGB network is able to define a larger number of bounding boxes than the thermal network. On the other hand, here we can see how the thermal network recognizes two civilian victims inside the crashed car that are very difficult to spot in both frames. Again, the thermal network achieves a better result in recognizing the distant persons that are watching from the top of the hill.
The second video was taken in the tent area, where all participating organizations had their command posts. Here we can see many instances of civilian cars, response vehicles and first responders that have been captured at short range and are successfully recognized by both networks. This table summarizes some quantitative results. The mean average position for the four classes is very similar in both networks. However, the mean intersection of a union with ground truth boxes is greater for the RGB images. Regarding different classes, the RGB network achieves the best average position for vehicles, whereas thermal performs better for both types of person classes. In both networks, the best average position is obtained for response vehicles. Recall values indicate that RGB has more difficulty in finding positives in the civilian person class, while in thermal this happens with civilian cars. All in all, results indicate a good performance of both networks with respective strengths and limitations that can be complementary. In this presentation, we have offered a preliminary analysis of the use of thermal and RGB images for automatic object detection in disaster response sites. For training and validation, we have selected and labeled image pairs from a new dataset captured from realistic outdoor exercises for actual emergency response specialists. Results have shown that using transfer learning from a pre-trained YOLO network has provided good results for thermal object detection. Besides, object recognition results confirm the complementary nature of both networks even in daylight conditions. Future research will require developing and evaluating fusion strategies. These can include data fusion of both modalities at the input or decision-level fusion at the output of both networks. And this is the end of our presentation from Malaga, Spain. Thank you.